Hello, Craig here. It is Wednesday, March the 30th. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Daily Craig Sports Show. A lot going on in the sports world. We're going to start right here locally in Indianapolis. I was just sent an article from a friend from NFL.com. Jim Irsay, <clears throat> the owner of our Colts here in Indianapolis, is not happy with our former quarterback, Carson Wentz. He is not excited about talking about him, and he has got him between the crosshairs. So this is uh, Kevin Patra wrote this story on NFL.com. Um, he spoke, Jim Mercer spoke yesterday, Tuesday, at the Palm Beach, Florida annual league meeting. He talked about reasons why they traded Carson Wentz after just one season. The worst thing you can do when you have a mistake is try to keep living with it and going forward. For us, it was something we had to move away from, at, from as a franchise, and it was very off, obvious. <clears throat> He noted the season finale loss to a three-win Jaguar team as the last straw. The 26-11 defeat that kept the Colts out of the playoff was a sad affair that wasn't even close to the final score. If you're a Colts fan, you understand that was ugly and unacceptable. No disrespect to Jacksonville, but I mean, they're the worst team in the league. You play well and hard for the first quarter or so, and then you're looking to go to the locker room and clean it out. I've never seen anything like that in my life. You say, my God, there's something wrong here. It needs to be corrected, and I think we feel like we did. It's clear that Ursay blamed Wentz for the inability to rise to the occasion. <clears throat> Your guy has got to pick, up, pick you up and carry you through Jacksonville. He has to. It's not an option. He absolutely has to do it. No excuses, no explanation. His dismal view of Wentz is less to do with the quarterback on field more than the leadership in the locker room. You search for the right chemistry with any team. In football, it's important for, as in any sport, there is. Chemistry is off, then there isn't anything going on there. It's detrimental and lower performance to a degree that's stunning and is shocking. For us, the fit just wasn't right. I don't know why. A lot of times you don't know why, but you just know it isn't. It's important to move in a different direction. I think it was quite remarkable and a great tribute to Chris Ballard, the general manager, to generate strong trade interest and get the deal done with Washington. I didn't don't lose fact that it was a pretty big blessing from the football gods where we were and where we could be if things didn't materialize. You end up cutting Carson and we'd get nothing. So he's kind of talking about that Matt Ryan aspect as well, getting him in here. So <clears throat> Here locally, we watch every single game. You, you you cheer for your team, then you hang out and you watch your guys, and you're living and dying by every single play, right? That's just how it is for um, – uh, that's just how it is with, with you and your sports. So we watched every single Colts game. And you watch Carson Wentz, and at the beginning it was two people are sacking him. First off, he hurt both ankles at the same time, which is remarkable, but it happened. He always, the thing with him is he always thought he could make the, the play, which is great. He always had that hero mentality. I'm not going down. I'm fighting to the end. Great. High five. That's awesome. I'm not hurt. I'm playing. Great. High five. Awesome. There comes a point in sports where you just have to tip your cap and go down and live to fight another day. I coach 13-year-old baseball. My son just had a best pitting lesson last night. <clears throat> In youth baseball, the inner fourth of the plate towards the player is that's the sweet spot if you're a pitcher. And if you're a batter, you're not doing anything if it goes there. You just tip your cap or foul it off and move on. When Carson Wentz has got two people wrapped around him at the three-yard line with a minute left of a tie ball game, you just fall down and protect the ball instead of getting turned around and throwing it up backwards over your shoulder. That resulted in a pick six. Against a division rival, you lose the game. You're playing catch-up all season. The other side of Carson Wentz is in Arizona. I think it was on actually Christmas night. I think it was Christmas night or Christmas Eve. All the backups are in. The whole team has COVID. He's there. He's playing. He makes a throw from about the 20, 22-yard line to the back of the end zone, running left, that if you gave me 5,000 chances to do, I would do them zero. An amazing play. The next week, he does the exact same thing I just talked about. He's going down backwards, throws it over his shoulder, <clears throat> tries to shovel pass, tries to underhand. He always wants to extend the play, which is admirable and honorable and hero, which is great. 
But in sports, the higher level you go, the more of a chance you just need to kind of sit and take a knee or tip your cap or live to fight another day. 13-year-old baseball is not anything near the NFL. But it's the same mentality. If you're playing basketball and some guy is on fire and he just keeps backing up, backing up, backing up, and he's finally making shots from midcourt, you either get to keep changing your defense or just tap your tip your cap and say, I hope he misses next time. In the NFL, <clears throat> there will be another play. There will be another play, especially with the team you're on. Everybody's telling me how great the Colts are. The roster's loaded, we're ready for a run, all this stuff, and that's awesome. But if you really truly believe your defense as a quarterback, you you kind of just get to the next play, right? <clears throat> the thing that's hurting the Colts is we have Peyton Manning forever and then Andrew Luck. Those are two amazing leaders. Amazing leaders. Now, Matt Ryan comes in and everybody's comparing him to those two. He sounds right. He looks right. He is professional. He's mature. He looks like a real dude. Um, and that's what we need. All you need is somebody that knows what play to check in and will not do the absolutely stupid stuff that was done. They, if they did not do these stupid things last year, Carson Wentz would be the quarterback this year. Because he just would have kept it rolling and they would have made the playoffs. But to hear an owner come out and say these things, he's not even talking about the on-the-field stuff. <clears throat> he's talking about when you go into a game to make the playoffs – <clears throat> and your quarterback plays awful, and they're not talking to the coaches, they're not talking to the players, he's over there by himself, kind of sulking or waiting to get back in the game. You gotta be a leader. You gotta be able to um you gotta be able to get the team rallied and get the team going. There's so there's zero reason they lost that game. Zero. Zero reason that the Colts went in to Jacksonville. Jacksonville had clown outfits on. Their their fans were dressed as clowns. They wanted nothing to do with that game. So, I like what they did. I like Matt Ryan. I think it's great. I think it's going to be a very, very fun and successful season for the Colts. I guess time will tell, but we'll see. We'll see what happens as it moves forward. But to hear an owner come out and talk that way about a player is really remarkable. It really is. It's, it, it very rarely is done nowadays. Okay, a little bit more NFL news from yesterday. The overtime rule was passed. So, now in the playoffs... Um, both teams get a chance to get the ball. Instead of you winning the coin toss, going down, scoring a touchdown, and celebrating and checking you off to the next round, I get a chance to match that. So now the question is, where does the strategy come into this? Will, <clears throat> will you now win the coin toss and go on defense like college does so you know what to expect? Will you go for two right out the gate just to kind of really put the pressure on me? A lot more strategies put into this than just you want a coin toss and we have to stop you or you go score. I like it. I think it's going to be a great addition. I think it was like 8 out of 10 people that won the coin toss in the playoffs won the game um, over the last few years, 10 years or so. So this will be really, really good. It's a nice welcome change. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the weather has got me. Um, I think... That's really going to probably be the only big rule change, I think. Um, I don't think they're going to do anything with pass interference or anything like that. The biggest problem for me is what they're doing with the quarterbacks. I mean, I understand we got to protect our quarterbacks and we can't let people be hitting them and everything. But, like, I mean, there are times where somebody's just tackling them and you get a the penalty. I mean, it is – to be a pass rusher, it's very, very difficult. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's one of those things that – They've got to get that figured out. They've got to get that figured out where defense can actually play defense. Because if you're a quarterback, I mean, you even saw it many times, especially with Kyler Murray or somebody, they're out there as a runner and get popped and you get a penalty. Well, it's a quarterback. Well, no, they're out of the pocket. They're a runner. <clears throat> so it's not really the same thing, you know, going on there. But um, so that's what's going on with Florida or in, in football in Florida. That's what's going on in football. The owners are down in Florida meeting for the annual meetings. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're here in Indianapolis where it's freezing and my voice and throat are all messed up. Um, there is, um, I mean, if you look at what's going on in, in baseball now, 
the different players are getting moved around. Some are getting sent down to the minor league camps. Some are uh, kind of confirming their role as an opening day starter, as on the opening day roster. Um, let's see here. There's just not a ton on the baseball front that um, that's really kind of making news. Pujol signed. Um, Adam Hazley went to the White Sox from the Phillies, an outfielder. So, I mean, that's a that's a good move. Um, the Pirates don't know what they're doing. They sent their number one recruit down to the minors. They said that he needs more development. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I'll say about baseball here before we wrap up is we had this lockout and all this stuff was going on with all these guys smarter than me and all these great reporters were, were, were basically reporting all this stuff and here's all the changes. And since we got back into camp, uh, Teams are deliberately tanking. The Reds are deliberately getting rid of their best players to get prospects, knowing that they're not going to win this year. Teams claim that they're going to spend money like the Cubs and who else? Guardians. Um, you just keep, you know, I mean, those are the two that come to mind, right? Um, most of everybody else is spending money. A lot of people are spending money. Even the Marlins are spending money. But you have these teams that claim that they're everybody, everybody's all in. This whole thing is to fix the competitive balance. Here we go. The Reds trade all their great players for prospects. And some of the prospects aren't even highly touted prospects. They just wanted to do a salary dump. <clears throat> the Cubs are a very, very historic franchise trying to get people to come play there. And they can't really get anybody signed. Um, so... What are we fighting for here? The other side of that is these top prospects are not supposed to be punished by going to the minors for X amount of time and then come up to the majors to fix their service years and all that crap that, that, that was messed up before. What's happening now is that's still happening. That's still happening. The top prospect for the Pirates just got sent down to the minors and they claim, oh, he needs some more development. Well, yeah, you can say that, but everybody else in the baseball world is saying he's ready. They're just, again, tinkering with the minor things that are kind of screwing the players. So, at the end of the day, what was the lockout for? I know that there's certain things that really helps the players and really helps the team and all this kind of blah, blah, blah. But, ultimately, it, it's one of those things where um, it, may, it may have made some teams more competitive. <clears throat> but in the NFL, <clears throat> the Jaguars were the worst team last year. They didn't deliberately tank. I mean, if the... Urban Meyer experiment worked, they would have been a pretty decent team. They have now a legit coach with more talent, so they should be competing. What NFL team right now today has zero shot at the playoffs? Can you name one? I mean, of course, it's the usual, so you can go through and say the Jets. They don't know if they do. The Giants kind of stink. Uh, the Lions really stink. But did we expect the Bengals to jump like they did? No, nobody did. We expected them to be better, but Joe Burrow was hurt. We had no idea what they were going to look like. Jamar Chase looked awesome at LSU, but was he an NFL body? So the point is, in the NFL, a turnaround is quicker. In basketball and baseball, you can sit there and tank for years and just bank money. It, it's just, I don't know, it's just frustrating as opening day is coming because all these teams are excited. Um, all these teams are ready to roll, ready to go win a championship, and I feel like my boys in Cincinnati are spinning their wheel with an owner that doesn't really care. So uh, it's just a little frustrating. But anyway, <clears throat> um, everybody else is still talking about the slap heard around the world with Will Smith and Chris Rock. Personally, I think it's ridiculous. Um, Chris Rock is hilarious. And he is the farthest thing from kind of a racist comic that you can hear of. And everybody's turning race onto this and all kinds of different stuff. And it is beyond stupid. That, 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 that it's continuing to go on. Uh, personally, um, well, I think the Academy and people should send a message that this is uncalled for because now a lot of comics are saying, well, what's going to stop anybody from coming up and hitting me on stage? And that's right. So if you're going to a comedy show, you're there for the jokes. And if you're a show like this and Chris Rock comes out, you're ready for some jokes. And I understand that Will was mad, but he laughed first. So it's just... 
The whole thing is dumb. We're going to stick to sports like we should. Um, okay, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you please uh, give our YouTube channel a subscription. Subscribe to the channel, please. Make sure you hit the bell for you get notified on all the videos we send out. Like this video. I thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great Wednesday. And um, what do we got today? Baseball this afternoon or this evening, some spring training. We've got more basketball as we get to the end. The Lakers are out of the playoff uh, picture right now. I'm not really into the NBA. I used to be. I used to love it. Maybe it's the fact that my Pacers stink. But I'm kind of over the whole NBA thing. I'm over Kyrie. I'm over LeBron. I'm just over it all. And and the playoffs are too long. The playoffs take forever. I loved the opening round series. It was best of five. It was just I'm not a big NBA fan anymore. Sorry about that. Um, so we'll try to touch on that as we're getting into the playoffs. But we got Final Four this weekend. Um, more stuff happening, hopefully, in the NFL. Um kind of a lull there for them for the next couple of weeks until we get to the draft and then it ramps up real quick. So thanks for tuning in. We will talk to you tomorrow.